Welcome to the Jean Hales podcast, Women's Health Week series, where we talk about all the things you want to hear but can never ask. Here's your host, Janet Mishamore. I don't know anyone who hasn't struggled with their diet over the last 18 months, and I'd be top of the queue. So today we're joined by natural therapist Sandra Valella, who provides a timely reminder about the relationship between mood and food. Please enjoy our guilt-free conversation with Sandra Valella. Hello, Sandra. This is such a treat for me. It's a topic that we both share a love of, but it's a very, very big topic. I want to kick off with how does food actually affect our mood? Yes, Janet, that's a really good question. There seems to be a number of ways that food can affect our mood. Now we've seen that diet has an impact on cardiovascular disease. And many of these underlying mechanisms that we try and target with cardiovascular disease are similar to what we're looking at with mood. So these mechanisms can include things like inflammation, which seems to be the root of all modern diseases and other types of mechanisms like oxidative stress. Food also can have an impact on our gut microbiota, so the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, but the bacteria that live in our gut. And also it tends to have an impact on providing ingredients that we need for healthy brain chemicals and the way that we can combat stress. So essentially what we want to do is have a diet that is going to target all those things. Anti-inflammatory can target those oxidative stress, feed that microbiota and provide these nutrients to help with our stress response. I'm going to ask you to go back just a couple of seconds and do what I'd call the index, the glossary of terms. And if we start off with what is inflammation? Yes. So inflammation, we'll often think about that, you know, it's our body's response to some sort of harm. So basically there's acute inflammation. If we hurt ourselves, imagine you get a splinter and then what happens over that period of time where you get this red and the heat and basically you see swelling occur. That's actually a really important thing for our body to be able to fight that infection. But with chronic inflammation, these systems underlying this particular mechanism keeps going and it tends to have an impact on the way our immune system is able to fight. So it's not ideal to have this chronic state of inflammation going on and it seems to be related to a lot of these modern diseases, cardiovascular disease, dementia, mental health. None of those three I'm keen on getting, so we might just move to how you prevent that. There was two other words that you used, oxidative stress. Can you give me a simple explanation as what that is? It's another invisible mechanism that happens. But once you have a look at a visual of how this happens, what happens with an an apple when you cut it, the skin off, okay, and you leave it? This oxidization takes place and it goes brown, okay? So that sort of sense, that sort of mechanism is happening in our body. But like what we can do, you think about the apple, what happens when you keep that apple skin on? Particularly if it's a red apple, and I'll come back to why it's a red apple, it protects us from that oxidative stress. So in fact, the way that we can deal with this is actually having an anti-inflammatory diet and a diet high in antioxidants to stop that oxidation process. So essentially, we want brightly coloured fruit and vegetables that have got all of these antioxidants in it. And we want anti-inflammatory foods, again, brightly coloured vegetables and fruit, and also the good fats that we find in fish and seeds and nuts. Conversely, we want to get rid of the foods that are going to be pro-inflammatory to drive that inflammation process, and they tend to be saturated fats. And we know that also processed foods and really refined carbohydrates can have an impact on those processes. So really what you're saying is talking about foods that provide the skin on the apple to protect the apple. I mean, simply, but I've got a fantastic visual there. Take that skin off and it goes brown. Keep the skin on and the apple is fantastic. And that's what we're talking about. That's right. But even more so, one of the particular antioxidants that's often talked about when we look at food and mood is this group called polyphenols. Now, don't get blown away by that. The way to think about it is the purples, reds and blacks of our fruit and vegetables. If you've got white rice, go black rice, red rice. If you've got a choice of an apple, you go red apple, purple grapes. You can you can be looking at blueberries. You can be looking at eggplant. And one of my all-time favourites, as you know, is prunes. And so they're also important. Now, 
polyphenols are also found in cocoa and wine, but the take-home message is not more wine and more cocoa, not more chocolate and wine, more the, <laughs> the broad, the colours of the rainbow. Sandra, you and I have often joked that people must think you have shares in the tinned fish industry with how often things like sardines are on your list of recommended foods. What are the other really essential foods to have in our shopping baskets if we're trying to improve our mood? Apart from the sardines and if you're not a fish eater, then having the omega-3s in the linseeds because the linseeds tick a lot of boxes or walnuts. Then think about brightly coloured vegetables. So they are a way of getting in these polyphenols, these particular plant chemicals that will target two mechanisms that we know are underlying mental health disorders, inflammation and oxidative stress. So we've got our antioxidants and our anti-inflammatories. When people think anti-inflammatories, I have to have a turmeric latte. No, you actually just have to have (laughs) colours of the rainbow, okay? And we want to have the variety of fruit and vegetables, at least five different vegetables at least, and a couple of pieces of fruit, brightly coloured. And the last one is because we know that processed food are associated with worse mental health, we want to have foods that are whole foods, foods that are close to nature as possible, whole grains, legumes, seeds, nuts, those type of things. And so the take-home message with that is get rid of white, go whole grain. Okay, so not white, red. If you're going to have bread as dense and as whole grain and seeded as you can, but looking at things like oats, rice, more of those whole grain type of ones so that you're going in that whole food particularly, less processed. Tell me what a breakfast plate in Sandra Valella's life looks like given we want to protect ourselves. Now, just a tip for those people listening, I've actually had many breakfasts with Sandra and it's a delight to have breakfast with Sandra. Okay, so at the moment, my breakfast, because it's a bit warmer, does actually have in it um, one of my top five foods, which is linseed, and this targets several mechanisms. It's rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, so the omega-3 fatty acids are the fats you find in fish and some of the seeds and nuts, which are really anti-inflammatory. And we know that a diet high in the good fats, particularly these omega-3s, are is associated with better mental health. The linseeds also contain these polyphenols as well and they are a a rich type of fibre as well. So they feed and nourish that gut microbiota and they're cheap. They're also a great source of these omega-3 fatty acids for vegans and vegetarians. And, in fact, there's some evidence that came out that perhaps for women the plant-based omega-3s are even better than the fish. So my breakfast at the moment is actually porridge and I add some lin with the linseeds. I freshly grind when I'm grinding them a few cardamom pods just to give it a bit of flavour. Oh. And then I add some other seeds and nuts. So at the moment I'll either put in some walnuts. As I was talking to my son this morning, walnuts, when you think of a walnut, what do you think of, Janet? What does it look like? I don't know. What does it look like? The brain. Oh, my God. Absolutely. So I was talking to my son on the way to school this morning and I said, what foods do you think are good for your your mental health? And he said, walnuts, Mama, because this time of the year when they're in season, we freshly crack them and they look like a brain. So I put walnuts with my breakfast as well. I've got some lean whole grains in terms of the carbohydrates that I choose, which are the oats, which keep my blood sugar nice and steady. And do I put anything else in it? I've got either... Blueberries or prunes? (laughs) I don't put banana in it at the moment. Look, the greener the banana, the higher in what we call the resistant starch, which is one of the foods to feed and nourish the gut microbiota. But, yeah, that's my breakfast at the moment. But prunes maybe in the summertime or if I could stew them, they would be yummy too. Give me a little snapshot of what lunch might look like and dinner, just so that we get a visual of what these foods that are the protective foods can look like on a plate. Okay, good. So, On a plate, what you would want to be doing is having the colours of the rainbow in terms of the vegetables. At least half the plate should be vegetables. And in that, you'd be, you know, thinking about one of the recipes that's coming up from our Gene Howes website is a coleslaw, okay? So a coleslaw that's maybe purple cabbage, there you've got your polyphenols, the purple. Then you might have some fresh mint in there. There's a green leafy vegetables, carrots, orange, Okay, and then I would might throw in a few pine nuts or some other nuts in there as well. You could have that with another one of my favourite top five foods, a can of sardines, and there, <laughs> there's your lunch. 
because the sardines also have got these omega-3 fats in them as well and providing the lean protein. Really important that we have protein because the building blocks of the protein, the amino acids, help with the production of our healthy brain chemicals as well. And if we get to dinner, the same sort of foods for dinner? Yes. So I might give a vegetarian option just for those people who aren't eating meat. So what you might have a look at is one of the foods on our Greenhouse website, the recipes, is a salad that's made with red rice, azuki beans. Every single ingredient in that recipe has been chosen because it nourishes and restores the gut microbiota. So the purple carrots, the beetroot, the sweet potato, the pecans, red rice, azuki beans. All of those are really important in terms of nourishing and restoring that gut microbiota. And we know that there's a really important interplay between what happens with that bacteria in our gut and what happens with our mind and the way that affects our mood. It seems so easy and so delicious. And yet quite often we find it hard to do it. Now, you haven't mentioned wine and you haven't mentioned dark chocolate in your little blurb. So I just need you to highlight, if we're going to eat chocolate, what should it be? If we are going to eat chocolate, the darker the chocolate means it's higher in the polyphenols. If it's cacao, then it's even higher in the polyphenols because they haven't been heated as much. So the raw cacao is going to be useful. Then just sit and enjoy it. Don't feel bad about it. Sit, savour it, eat mindfully. Eating mindfully is a key because I tend to eat very quickly when it's something like chocolate. And red wine better than white wine? Red wine, yes, and particularly Pinot Noir apparently is higher in these polyphenols. But to put it into context, the amount of red wine you need to drink to get a good amount of polyphenols is undrinkable for the (laughs) gallons per day. So, you know, it's a little bit in moderation. Yes, absolutely. Sandra, over the last year, a lot of us have felt very stressed, very flat, very down. It's so easy to rush to a traditional comfort food like a pizza, a pie, a big cake. What does that do in terms of inflammation, our mood, how we generally feel? So, look, we might have immediate gratification. We might immediately feel good from doing that. But it's the ingredients in there that are processed that tend to be associated with a worse mood. And it's because they drive the inflammatory process. Rather than providing us with antioxidants, our body needs to actually use its its mechanisms to fight that. But I think we also need to be a little bit easy on ourselves and in the sense that depending on what sort of day it's been, like I'll I'll use the example the other day in lockdown, trying to supervise two children at home, homeschooling and trying to do an online lecture, do all my work admin, and it got to 3.30 and I took my son out for a walk and we were out and having that walk. And I just thought, we're going to stay out there a little bit longer, which meant that I'm not going to get home in time to be able to cook dinner and tonight I'm I'm going to order takeaway. For me, the balance was being out in nature, that green space, which we know is also really important for our mental health. Watching my son, interacting with my son, with him while we're playing in this green space in the garden, that's about balance. So every now and then, it's okay to be easy on yourself and order that pizza, but try and make it a salad on the side, you know, just kind of balance it out a bit because we have to be fair and we have to try and sort of not be too hard on ourselves all the time because it is difficult to sort of manage other aspects of our life in creating this balance. Okay, Sandra, just to round it up, I'm going to do a fast and furious finale. I'm going to give you a food and you're going to tell me what it should be swapped to. So if I start off with white rice. Brown rice or red rice or black rice. Crackers. I would suggest in my recipe on the Gene House website, which are the seeded crackers, really easy to make, full Beautiful. of all lots of seeds that feed and nourish that good bacteria in the gut. White bread. The best bread you can afford, you know, the denser, the whole grains, try some rye, try some spelt, add some, add some seeds in it. Commercial breakfast cereal. Try an oat-based breakfast, so either porridge or the bierke style muesli, which you soak overnight, or making a homemade granola or, or buy a good granola because then it's got all the seeds and nuts with it as well. A crispy cream donut? <laughs> well, I, I have a bit of a weakness for, for donuts, so. <laughs> <laughs> no confessions here. 
Sometimes food is also something we talk about. So once every school holidays, my children and I go into the city and we have a very beautiful donut from a specialty shop. It's all about balance. <laughs> well got out of. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking to Sandra Villela and this is no exception. Thank you for a wonderful episode talking about food and how it can influence our mood and the inflammatory processes. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you, Janet, and I hope it has inspired people to look at the way that they eat to help to improve their mood. And there are lots of recipes on our Jean Howells website under the recipes that will give simple, delicious and nutritious ways to try and put this into practice. Thank you. I love talking to Sandra. It always inspires me to eat better and makes me hungry. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Sandra Volella and do stay tuned for the other interviews in our Women's Health Week series. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Jean Hales podcast, Women's Health Week series. Today's episode has been brought to you by Liptemba. For free, expert health information for all women, girls and gender diverse people, visit jeanhales.org.au.